Hey everyone, it's Wingspan TT, the fourth best commentator on YouTube. And just because I'm the fourth best doesn't mean that I don't listen. I'm not one of you. I'm a man of the people. And I was listening to the comments. People were like, Wingspan, we want to see a how to wanted video. We saw how to deathmatch, how to assassinate, how to domination. We want how to wanted. And I'm like, all right, I can do that. I can do that. I love wanted. Wanted is like the original mode of Assassin's Creed uh, multiplayer. This guy's just going to get. Uh, fucking poison right now and if you didn't know that if you didn't play brotherhood wanted was the original mode and if you really think about it every other mode is really just a is, is wanted with some twists like deathmatch is wanted on a small map with no duplicate assassin is wanted except with no contracts and you can like just you know get anyone as your target and someone also commented on one of my videos like wingspan you called this how to domination or how to how to deathmatch but really it's just it should be called how how wingspan plays deathmatch or how you could play well yes I know that. I, I, I like to give my viewers a little credit. I like to believe that they're capable of reading and understanding things on a level above at least second grade. So yes, it is just how I do it. And even this isn't even just how do I play. Look, I got a perfect kill set up on this person. I like, got the focus going on here. And then of course my pursuer has to show up and fucking ruin everything. Like, hello, he's, I was about, I, I was, that kill was gonna be great. It was gonna be like 400, 600. It was gonna be a lot of points. It was gonna be a lot of points. Probably like 700 point kill. Kind of ruin. So the point is, yes, it is just one way you can play wanted. It is not even just the only play uh, I, eh, the only way that I play wanted. But it's just a nice reminder. And of course, once again, it's just a nice reminder that there are plenty of ways to play this game and be successful. So even the loadout that I've chosen here uh, with morph and wipe, is this really the ideal way to play one? No, there's no perfect way. There's no perfect solution. Um, you know, you just kind of mix it up. And this is kind of, this is the way also that the metagame and the community evolves too, is that people trying different things and seeing different ways to approach a situation. So one thing I like to have and wanted here, and kind of why I chose this loadout, was I have Morph, which is generally a defensive skill, okay? It's generally you use Morph to uh, hide from people. And then, okay, where's this guy? Um, and then um, Wipe tends to be more of an offensive skill. You use Wipe right before you move in to kill someone so they can't use any abilities to stop you or stun you or anything like that. Um, but of course, Wipe has some defensive uses, and Wipe can also be used to identify your target. Both of these abilities actually can be used to identify your target, which a lot of people just don't end up doing. If you, you can use Morph when you're in a group, of course, to morph your own group, make everyone look like you. But if you lock onto a player and hold down, in this case, left bumper, if you hold down the button, you will morph around the person there. So it'll change everyone there into a copy of you, and therefore reveal your target in a group. Now, of course, there's the there's the downside to that, which is your target will immediately know who one of their pursuers is, because like, huh, why is everyone around me turning into a buccaneer? Well, mateys, it's because the buccaneer is hunting you. Um, the other, but the upside is that unlike something like firecrackers or money bomb, they they you can do it from a really far range where they won't see you doing a throw animation. They won't know until the animation is complete what's going on. So they're not going to get ready to run away or get ready to 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 look for a person throwing coins or firecrackers all over the ground. That's a really great use of morph, um, just in general. Wipe, of course, can also be used to identify your pursuers because it makes real players glow. They glow like the vampires in Twilight. So if you see people sparkling, it either means you're about to be swept up in a paranormal love tale or that player is a person that you need to murder. And here, just hanging back, laying in the crowd, I could have got a focus stun there. Um, and really, I fucked up here. I, um... I could have got a focus stun. And because focus stuns are relatively new, like there's something that was added in, <coughs> I, I don't know, I guess they were added in Assassin's Creed 3. I don't remember them being in Revelations. Um, but I'm still not, it's not in my like DNA, it's not in my nature to just go for the focus stun. So really, you, I should have played it cool and got an extra 50 points out of here. And again, fucking up, this guy could have got focus stun. And at that point, I was checking the score. Uh, instead of watching out for the person running at me and putting a blade directly through my cranium, my cerebellum being pierced by a foot-long blade. Kind of painful. Someone had also asked me in a comment, Wingspan, when you look at the scoreboard, what do the circles mean? I don't... There, there are no circles. You're imagining them. You're actually crazy. There's no such thing as circles. No, that is not the real answer. The circles represent, as far as I know, what they mean is that the people in the circles are in an Xbox Live party together. And here, I finally get the fucking acrobatic kill. And of course, only to get murdered temporarily. No, I didn't get murdered. I thought that guy was my pursuer. Um, so if you see circles, it doesn't mean anything. All it means that those people are in a party together. Um, I guess it does mean something strategically. It means that those people are not going to be listening to the in-game voice. So you can talk all you want. You don't have to worry about it. And here, you see that guy right around the corner? Um, 
people are always like wingspan. How do you know my pursuer? Good players are gonna do that edging thing where they're trying to um, identify you. Uh, where they're basically trying to screen you from the crowd using the line of sight going around corners and ledges and edges and obstructions to try to get the line of sight meter to go off so when you see people standing by the edge or going past the edge and then coming back again those people are very likely to be your pursuer or they're just kind of creepy maybe they just have a crush on you you know maybe it's like hey wingspan i've seen your videos i think you're kind of sexy i want to check it out here moving into this group but i decided um, I knew that person was going to make a break for it. Uh, so I decided to throw the poison dart at her. And someone had also suggested Wingspan, why don't you check out poison dart? Because throwing knives aren't as reliable as they used to be. They have a huge cooldown now. Um, and they're not, they're not the kind of guaranteed stun they used to be. I 100% agree. So I decided to go with poison dart here. People are like, Wingspan, why do you use the pistol? Why, use the, why don't you use more throwing knives? Well, throwing knives, I, this is the thing. People get stuck in their head. Like, throwing knives were, like, the number one thing. If you were playing Revelations and you didn't use throwing knives, you didn't know what you were doing. Like, you had to use it. Assassin's Creed 3, you pretty much had to use throwing knives. You know, pistol's good in some situations. But the problem is that once you double the cooldown of ability, is this still the guaranteed best ability? Here's this guy doing the fucking um, glimmer thing around the corner again. And I attempted to get the stun at him through the hay bale, but he knew I was in the hay bale. This guy's clearly pretty good, and he was doing super slow glimmer. Uh, he knew he was doing Major Tom from the VLRM clan, represent. I am leading here 2,500 points, not the most impressive score, but, 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 you know, I want to play it very low key and see Here's, how, here's a way that you could win um, a round of wanted, just playing it generally low-key. And I actually have another video coming up, and this is not like low-key here, but you get that idea. I have another video coming up where I'm playing completely differently with teleport and decoy, just going for a lot more, just like running around the map, escaping people. I really love that animation, by the way. She can just jump up on me anytime she wants. Love it. The Game Freak 101 Kid. And, and uh, as, as much, you know, I'm not going to brag on people's usernames or anything like that, but Game Freak 101 Kid, I feel like you really need to pick one thing. Are you Game Freak? Is that your thing? Are you, like, Game 101? Are you teaching people a lesson? Is it, like, are you a kid? Is Game Freak Kid? There's really no, why do you have two nouns? You have Freak and Kid in there. I was kind of praying that this guy didn't actually see which one of me was me. Which um, turns out it doesn't matter because he got shot. But sometimes you gotta play cool. See there, he probably had me identified. There's a whole waterfall of people there going into that uh, checkpoint. He probably had me identified, but there's no reason to just give myself away and run away. I have no real means to identify myself. But if I just start running, he might just pistol or throwing knife me. And this guy here, I know he's smart now. He's probably got smoke bomb or something like that. So I'm like, fuck this. I'm not taking any chances. Poison dart, and uh, just just to rub salt in the wounds, just fucking throw some taunts in there. Anyway, um, I don't remember what the hell I was saying. I don't like the Buccaneer. I just decided to go with him because I want the achievements. Um, and if you want to unlock challenges, by the way, you want to you want to make a lot of EXP really fast. You should be playing Wolfpack. Oh, Jesus Christ, can you make a lot of Wolfpack? This guy goes immediately into um, he uses his own morph to reveal me. Which I was surprised he did that at close range. Maybe he doesn't know that you can throw it. Um, but you'll notice when people do the morph, they do that Ezio animation from Assassin's Creed 2. Where your character raises his hand and snaps his fingers in the air. So if you're ever not sure who in the morph group, like you're seeing a morph group, but it's really hard to tell. Like Sometimes you'll see the animation, or you'll see the end of the animation, but like, okay, that's the real guy. So look for that animation. If you guys want, by the way, I was considering, in addition to doing my ebook, which is almost finished, it's really, it's really long, it's thousands and thousands of words long, it's way longer than any article I've ever written about Assassin's Creed strategy. In addition to that, I was considering doing a video, like how to, how to identify your pursuer, and just taking a bunch of random footage I have. I know Loomer um, did a really great Templar training series back in the day about that, but you know, some things have changed since then, plus hey, I need to get views on my videos. So here, this guy's circumnavigating me, he's trying to figure out who's who, and I was really hoping that he wouldn't know it's me. I went for the stun and I was right. He had no clue or he was moving in for a poison or a focus or something like that. Um, but with 46 seconds left on the clock. And here I pretty much giving myself away. And Glimmer Man shows up. Oh, uh, the Glimmer Man. It feels like that should be a Nicolas Cage movie. Was, was he in something like that? I feel like he needs... There, there could be a movie called Glimmer Man with Nicolas Cage just freaking out every five seconds. I would definitely watch that movie. And uh, here we're only 30 seconds left on the clock. I was just trying to get away for a second. Uh, get away from the whispers. I don't I had no clue where my pursuer was, but apparently he was right on top of me. And sometimes you can see them standing on top of you because you see their shadow on the ground. They're above you on the roof. You see their shadow on the outline. And especially, you know, I don't know. But it, it really depends, you know, where the shadows are lining up, where the sun is, what time of day it is. And here, this is like my fucking birthday treat here. It's like, stun you, 
Hanging out in the bush. Kill this guy. Whoa, whoa, hey, it's a big fucking party. Hey, guys, it is a big party. And what better way to celebrate a party, ladies and gentlemen, than by cooking all of your guests a delicious meal. Now, normally you don't go into a meal directly after punching someone in the face or stabbing them in a hay bale, but hey, sometimes mistakes happen, sometimes you want to make up for it. And for that, I highly recommend some beef stroganoff. Now, if you're not into beef for religious reasons or you really like cows or you're cow intolerant, I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't want to eat beef. You could always go with ground turkey, but you want to pick up one of those containers from the grocery store, you know, the one, just over one pound, maybe 1.25 pounds, um, and you want to be browning that in a pan. If you don't know what that means, you're basically just going to get the pan hot, throw the meat in, stir it around so it's all cooked. But while that's happening, you want to get some noodles, and this is eventually going to be the base, the base of your stroganoff. Uh, people always say that, um, I don't know, the bow tie, the bow tie kind of pasta is, is the classical stuff, but hey, if you are a bow tie person, go with that, but if you're not a PBS journalist, you go with something, if you're a penne person, go with penne, don't do this over like, I don't know, spaghetti, that'd be kind of gross, linguine, I could maybe see, but I would stick with penne or ziti-ish kind of stuff, I, I don't know, just something small, something small, but not elbow macaroni, that's too small. So you'll be browning the meat. You want to get it just a little bit like past normally browned. You know, like you, you want it to, yeah, it can be a little bit red inside, but um, you want it to at least be mostly cooked. You want to drain that out, get that out, whatever you do with it. I don't care. You want to save it. You want to drink it in some blood ritual. That's fine. But you want to drain it out of the pan. Then you want to throw in about half a chopped onion and then maybe, I don't know, a quarter to half a cup of fresh chopped mushrooms. Actually, you probably put the mushrooms in a couple minutes after the onions. You want to give the onions some time to soak in the flavor along with the meat cook. They'll take definitely longer to cook than the uh, than the mushrooms will. And once that's all in there, what I want you to do, toss that around, okay? It's, it's kind of steaming together. The meat is with the veggies and the veggies with the fungus and all that stuff. You want to throw in an unreasonable amount of garlic salt. And when I say that, I mean like whatever amount of garlic salt you think is the right amount, you want to just put like probably 30% more than that. So uh, maybe what? I don't know, like a, ta a tablespoon and a half or so of garlic salt. You want to get a nice little frosty layer on top of there. And then an unreasonable amount of pepper. And I'm of the big Alice in Wonderland style of like, there can always be more pepper. Although, I don't know if it's through the looking glass. Anyway, I'm going to throw a whole bunch of pepper in there. Garlic salt, uh, about a tablespoon or you know, two tablespoons of Worcestershire salt. Worc 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 Worcestershire salt. You know what I'm talking about. That's the Lee and Perrin stuff. Don't settle for the store brand. And, and here, here's the thing. I would also say you kind of want to also toss in a little bit of red wine. Not, not a lot. Not a lot, maybe just like one tablespoon or two thirds of a tablespoon, which I guess is like the two teaspoons. Something, a little, a little bit of spice to it, Shiraz. You don't want to go with a Beaujolais or something boring. Maybe a Shiraz, something with a little kick to it. Okay, stir that all in there. Make sure all the juices are juiced into the meat and everything else. And then, of course, this is where you cheap out with it. We're going to throw in a can of cream of mushroom soup. You can go with Campbell's, you can go with whatever. Just make sure it's the full fat kind. You know, if you if you were worried about calories, you would not be making any kind of struggle up. You can throw in a can of the condensed, the, the gloppy cream mushroom soup. Just throw it all in there, mix it all in there, throw a cover on this and simmer it on low for like 10 to 12 minutes. Just low, so as low as it can be. Okay, while that's going, since it's gonna be 10 minutes, perfect time to play one round of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag multiplayer since it, you know they're pretty much all timed to exactly 10 minutes. And when that time's up, you wanna come out there, you wanna throw in, I don't know, uh, a quarter, maybe a third of a cup of sour cream. Again, full fat sour cream. Don't watch the calories on this, just throw in the sour cream and mix it all in. And if you're not sure, it should be coming out to like a creamy, light color, like not, not like white it should be like mm, like a like a gray it should look like it's not exactly food like it's this gray color you got all the meat the fungus is in there <laughs> the gray meat um and all the sausage should smell wonderful and you want to take all that you want to put it out you you know whether or not you just put noodles in and just mix them in we put noodles on plate and serve this over the noodles I can go either way, you know, there's there's both schools of thought on it, but I personally like to just serve it over noodles because I, I want the noodles to be in their own realm. And of course, while all that was happening, really, you should just make sure that the noodles didn't overcook. But most noodles, al dente, 9 to 11 minutes, so it should be around the same timing. Very easy. This is a super easy meal. You throw it up quick, you put it in front of your friends, you're like, hey, look, I'm really sorry that time I blended to blend group, focused on you, and then slit your fucking throat. Here's some beef stroganoff. Enjoy it. Everyone, I'm Wingspan TT from TopTierTactics.com. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you'll come back next time. And until all that happens, cheers.